The following is a presentation of SC State Athletics. You are watching the Buddy Pew Show, featuring highlights of the South Carolina State Bulldogs. Our sponsors are Prisma Health, the South Carolina Education Lottery, the County of Orangeburg, working hard for you. Farm Bureau Insurance, get a quote at farmbureaupromise.com. Founders Federal Credit Union, relax with Founders. And by the Department of Health and Environmental Control, healthy people living in healthy communities. And now, here's our host, the voice of the South Carolina State Bulldogs, Ernest Robinson. For the fourth time in five weeks, the South Carolina State Bulldogs are on road this week in the capital of Florida, Tallahassee, to take on the Florida a and Rattlers. Florida A&M, like Bethune-Cookman, no longer a member of the MEAC. They're in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. And Bulldog head football coach Buddy Pugh like nothing better than continue with another win over one of his former conference rivals. Talk about this Florida A&M team, a big winner last week. Everyone a little surprised that they shut out a pretty good Alabama State team. Fast and, and real physical. These guys are extremely tough in the secondary. That number five guy in the secondary, you see him just hit people all over the place. But one, three, four, five, all them low numbers over there. You know, they got they, they real, real, real football players. So we got to get, you know, our offense to really attack that defense in a way where we can match up with their physicality. And then on defense, we've got to be able to stop the run, I think. You know, they, we, the, the sneaky thought is that they're going they to throw, really, really throw the football on us a good bit. Big wide receivers, 85, 19, 10, all those guys. But the real deal is I think they're going to run the football on us. So now we need to figure out how to keep them from doing that if we can, then we got a good shot of beating these guys down here in Tallahassee. What is the key to winning in Tallahassee? This is a game on the road. You're going to have a hostile crowd. You got the band right behind you guys over there. This crowd is uh, certainly very astute with football. They're going to, the fans are going to be in tune. They know the importance of winning this football game. Staying calm, staying in the football game to the very end. We got a good, we, we got a good football team to be able to play with these guys. But what we really got to understand is that it's not over until it's over. So regardless of how good or how bad it goes early in the game, we got to stay in it. And at that point, then, we'll be in a position to be able to take advantage of the situation at the end. Our team's in great physical condition. I'm telling you, we'll play really good late in the game. At that point, we need to take it to the house. You start talking about the challenge of this defense of Florida A&M up front. They got a couple transfers from Florida State. These guys really make it difficult. This is going to be a huge challenge for your offensive line, maybe their biggest so far this season. Yeah, but our offensive line, I think, will be fine. But those guys, if we can keep them healthy, can block anybody. So. You know, that doesn't concern me as much as I'm concerned a little bit by the fact that we're a little bit gimpy up front. Uh, Chris uh, Simon at the tackle, at the right tackle position, is beat up a little bit. And, and, and Nick Tays and, and, and Eric Brown both got a little bit of ankle issues. But if they can be co completely healthy for the whole game, then we'll be fine. Coach, special teams really hurt us last week. We know Florida and them excellent special teams, punting, kicking. That's going to be a crucial play every time one of those plays happen. I think they'll try to get one of our points, Ernest. They, 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 they've got a little bit of a bird in their saddle about the fact that we got two of theirs the last time they played in Orangeburg. So I'm sure they'll try to get after. Plus, on top of that, we had some issues with our point alignment last week. So they'll see on film that we got some vulnerability. But now I think we got that fixed. Hopefully we do. What's going to be the key to getting a win? We got to be able to score points against that defense. All right, Coach, best of luck tonight. Thank you, Ernest. All right, Coach, but if you had football coach at the South Carolina State Bulldogs. Martinez approaches. It's a high. End over and kick spiraling toward the left end. Juwan Moody fills it on the left side of the field. He's at the 10. At the 15, Fikes gets up to the 20-yard line and goes out of bounds. So that's where the Bulldogs will put it in play first and 10 at about the Bulldog 20-yard line. Back to pass is Fields. Fields throws it out in the flat. Has a man out there caught. Shaq at the 40. At the 45. Still on his feet at the 50. They say he stepped out of bounds. But what a nice connection. Shotgun snap. Straight drop back. Here comes pressure. Fields has the run. Forced out. He's got room. Fields at midfield. Gets across and dives toward that first down marker. They gave him a generous spot. My goodness. Shotgun snap. Corey. Handoff. No. Keeps it himself on the read option. Fields gets across the 45. Three down linemen by the Bulldogs. Handoff inside. This is Jennings trying to get outside. He turns the corner. Jennings, like a bowling ball, gets up to the first down marker. Cut down by Kobe Durant at the 20-yard line. 
Snap it back to McKay. They give it to Cherie. Going left. Cherie stops, makes a man miss, makes another man miss, still on his feet at the 40 at the 45. Cherie, a Houdiniak to the 45 yard line of South Carolina State. Shotgun snap. They give it to Kendrill over the left side. Kendrill bounces it outside, turns up field at the 10. Hit hard, throws that tackler off him at the 13. He's knocked out of bounds. In motion is Xavier Smith. They give it to him on the end around. He's tackled in the backfield. What an outstanding play. Jablonski Green diving in. Bulldogs showing pressure. Here it comes. Back to pass McKay. Slips down a little bit. Throws it out there. Has a man out there. It is two. Oh, that's a caught. My goodness, what a catch. One-handed grab. Play action fake. Back to pass McKay. McKay looking long. Nothing there. Steps up in the pocket. Way across the line of scrimmage, I thought. Caught over there. First down. In motion. They give it to Jennings. Backside into the end zone. He walks in. Touchdown. What a nice play. Florida A&M on the board. Snaps good. Holds good, toes in it. It is up and it is true. So with 14-11 to go here in the first half, our score, Florida and m 7 South Carolina State, nothing. Shotgun snap, straight drop back. Corey looking, throws it out in the flat, got Wolverine caught up at about the 31-yard line. Shotgun snap, Corey back to pass. Pressure coming, he throws it out there. It is in the hands and intercepted. Massey had it. It's intercepted by Florida A&M. And for the 15th straight game, the Rattlers get a turnover. And on the return for Florida A&M in the backfield, that is Jennings. They give it to him. Jennings gets the first down and more. Jennings makes the man miss, gets down to the seven-yard line. First and goal, Florida A&M. Snaps good. Toes in it. It is up, and it is good. Jose Romar Martinez. So at 7.31 to go here in the first half, our score, Florida A&M 10, South Carolina State. Nothing. Back to pass, Fields. Fields looking, throwing long. Intercepted right at about the 48-yard line. What a nice play. Took too long to get there. Shotgun formation now for McKay. Play, uh, pump fake, throws it out in the flat. It is caught. Shotgun snap straight, drop back. He's looking right. He's probably throwing right. Wrapped up, and he is going to be tackled down. They tried to take it from him. 10-0 Florida a &M looking to add three more. There's a snap. Toes in it. It is up, and it is. I mean, it would have been good from 55 yards. Makes it 13 for Florida a and Nothing for South Carolina State. Sharid goes in motion to the right, comes back now. They give it to Bonnet. Bonnet explodes over the left side at the 30. Bonnet into up the field, up to the 25, down to the 23-yard line. High snap. They give it to Bonnet over the left side. Bonnet fights through. Bonnet to 15. Bonnet to 10. Five. Touchdown. Bishop Bonnet. And it is a forgettable first half for South Carolina State. As our score, Florida A&M 20. South Carolina State, nothing. All right, coach, this football game started off South Carolina State, able to move the football a little bit, but, you know, we didn't, we really weren't able to establish anything. They did such a good job in stopping that running game, which, of course, limits what you can do. Yeah, I think they got to the point where we were struggling to protect uh, our passer, and, uh, you know, we couldn't run the football. So you put those two items together, it was a rough night for us. You know, you start talking about Florida a and it all starts up front. Of course, McKees Bell and those kids on the, on the back line, but uh, Isaiah Land and that front four really put pressure on Corey. They did a nice job up front. I didn't really anticipate not being able to block them up front, but at the same time, we knew that their secondary was extremely physical. One of the things that surprised me more about Florida a and and I've talked often about the fact that, uh, you know, B.J. Bonnet wasn't a big running back, uh, the small running back, and it looks like Bonnet has sort of adopted the fact that he's got to play better. Jennings is his name, and they both were just really strong runners. Their running game surprised me. Well, they, I thought they did a nice job of complimenting each other, and they ran the football in some situations where you would all know think they'd throw. So, you know, they've got a nice little, little package together, and, you know, we've got to kind of figure out some of those kind of things for ourselves because we go into our conference here next week, and, you know, this was really an eye-opener for us. So, you know, we got to figure out how we can do some of the same kind of stuff ourselves. In this first half, you're trying to keep it to a two-score game. Of course, Jose Romo Martinez comes in, kicks that field goal. But, of course, when they get that fourth score in the first half, that was one that you're really trying to avoid. It was. Uh, we wanted to uh, keep that last drive going. If we could have simply kept the ball away from them for a little bit longer, then we would have had an opportunity, I think, to get out of there with a lot less points scored. But, you know, that was not the case. It was a tough night for South Carolina State, especially in the first half. We're going to take a time out here on the Buddy Pew Show. We'll come back with more right after these messages.
Coach, this is the Prisma Health Injury Report. Mm -hmm. This was a physical football game. We had some guys to, to get banged up in this football game. We did. Uh, Tyrone Hicks was actually subbing in the game for B.J. Davis, who was uh, out for target in the first half. We were just trying to get him through the first half, but he couldn't make it through that part because he got a little bit of a, I think it was a knee injury, that kind of way. And then uh, Eric Brown, our center, had a little bit of an ankle deal. We had to take him out a time or two. Uh, he, he, I think he'll be fine for next week. And then uh, we also had uh, um, uh, Jablonski Green. Yeah, Jablonski Green, who had just gotten back from having had a wrist surgery. I think he may have irritated that surgery a little bit, but hopefully all those guys will be back for next week. All right, that is the Prisma Health Injury Report for the Florida a and game. We're going to take another time out here on the Buddy P Show. When we come back, we'll talk about Saturday's second half from Tallahassee on this edition of the Buddy P Show. Gavin approaches end over end kick, and this is going to be number 10. This is Sharid uh, to the left. Sharid going backwards, now get, turns the corner at the 15, gets across the 20. Shotgun snap, play action fake. McKay throws it. He's hit as he throws. It is caught over there. What a catch. The Kobe Durant had his hands on the football, couldn't decide if he wanted to go for the interception or not. Shotgun snap, play action fake. McKay pump and go. Throwing it over. Got a man over there. Caught at the 10. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida A&M on the reception. That's a big tight end, Kamara Young. Here's the point after. Martinez's toe is in it. It is up and it is good. So with 12.45 to go in the third, a lot of time to go, but we're down four scores. 27 for Florida A&M, nothing for South Carolina State. Here's a snap. Fields back to pass. Fields, got time, steps up in the pocket, going to run. At the 35, down to about the 42-yard line. Football comes out after he hit the ground, and it's going to be ruled he's down at the 41-yard line. And now they've reversed the call, and they've given the football to Florida a and Shotgun snap. McKay back to pass, looking left. He's wrapped up, spins away, still on his feet, wrapped up again, knocked down way back at the 42 of Florida a and What penetration by South Carolina State, Jablonski Green. Handoff to Rail Jennings. Jennings breaks through. Jennings bounces off a guy to 48. Jennings gets outside, knocked down at about the 41 yard line. Football on the near hash. Shotgun snap, play action fake. Corey looking long. Corey got a man out there, and Shaq Davis goes down. No flag. There comes a flag. Yeah, that was pass interference. There's a snap. Back to pass Corey. Corey looking long. Corey throwing it out there. It is picked off. Shaq Davis. Corey thought Shaq was going to cut it off. Shaq kept going. High snap to give it to Bishop over the left side. Bishop with the speed. Turns the corner on the left. And Bishop at the 45 down to about the 39-yard line of South Carolina State. Shotgun snap. Corey back to pass. In trouble. Corey's in trouble. Wrapped up. He is slammed down again. Man, that's Isaiah Land in there for the Florida a and Rattlers. Dixon now comes to the H-back position on the left side. Handoff up the middle. Jennings, J big run up the middle. Jennings spun around. That's Bishop Bonnet. Bonnet on his feet. Bonnet spinning and going forward. Bonnet wrapped up all the way down to the 38 of South Carolina State. Shotgun snapped to McKay. Play action fake to Bonnet. Now wants to go long. Throws his land out there. Got Dixon at the 25. Dixon, good tackle in the open field by Kobe Durant, but not before they pick up a first down. Shotgun snap to give it to McKay. Tillman wrapped up in the backfield. He ain't going anywhere. Wrapped up, brought down Jablonski Green. Shotgun, back to pass, looking left, throwing left. Got a man out to Sanders. Sanders wrapped up. Jalen Evans brings him down, but not before he picks up a first down. In motion is Sanders. He gives it to Bonnet over the left side. Bonnet puts his head down, runs hard, gets down to about the four. Football has it's come loose. South Carolina State has the football. Bulldog defense still on the field. So it looks like Florida a and may maintain the possession. That's the end of the third quarter here tonight in Tallahassee, Florida. It has not been good for your South Carolina State Bulldogs. Florida AM and 27, South Carolina State. Nothing to receive as each side. Now Jennings goes in motion. They throw the screen back the other way. It is wrapped up and diagnosed. B.J. Davis slamming the receiver down. What a tackle by B.J. in the open field. Snaps good, holds good, toe is in it. It is up and it is no good. Jose Romo Martinez misses the field goal from 31 yards out. Shotgun snap, 
This is Corey Fields back in the game. Hand off to Anthony over the right side. Anthony at the 15, up to about the 16-yard line, and that is probably the most positive run the Bulldogs have had in quite some time. Shotgun snap, play action fake. Corey, pump fake. Corey in trouble. Corey breaks free somehow, still on his feet, and still going to lose yards on the play. He lost about five. Yancey Washington goes to the right side. Corey back to pass. Quick pass, top, first down Bulldogs. Will Vereen with the catch up at about the 41-yard line. Fields from the shotgun. Straight drop back. Looking right, throwing out there. Again, this is Will Vereen. Still on his feet. Vereen gets the first down and about three more. Shotgun formation. There's the snap. Looking left. Throwing out there. Got a man out in the flat. It's caught. Terrell Holmes up at the 25-yard line. Ja'Cory Benson in the backfield. They snap it. Corey rolls to the right. Corey's in trouble. Corey. Throws it out. They got a man wide open. Ja'Cory Benson tackled down to the three-yard line. What a play by Corey Fields under tremendous pressure. Shotgun snap. Dante Anthony puts his head down and gets into the end zone for the score. So with 6.39 to go in this football game, we finally get on the board. Attempted his first field goal um, point after last week. Gets that toe in it. It's up, and Gavin Zimmerman has got his second extra point. So with 6.39 to go here in the football game, it's 27 for Florida and m 7 for South Carolina State. Toe is in it. It is up. It is long enough. It is good. So Jose Romo Martinez, 51 yards out, puts the final nail in the coffin, 30 for Florida and m 7 for South Carolina State. All right, Coach, we start talking about second half, regrouping in the second half. What was the mood in the locker room? Because we played better at times this year in the second half. I'm sure you had to be optimistic, but this time we were not coming out with the football. Right. Well, the, that was the one unusual thing about the second half, the fact that we didn't have the football because we didn't get a chance to defer. But what I, I thought was that we were going to get in there and stop them and then at that point get the football back and then try to see if we can make some kind of dent in their number that way. But, uh, you know, we weren't fortunate enough to have that happen. Uh, from the very beginning, uh, you know, they were able to get the football down the field and, and made a couple really, I guess, maybe unusual, unusually nice plays to get the football down on the end, down in the end zone. They, they eventually hit us on a little, little up play off of the screen play, a little bit of a, deep, a screen deep, and, and got it in. So we were down 27 nothing. You know, at that point, then from there, you know, we were, you know, trying to figure out if we could get the football back down the field. So at that point, we had to. I mean, the urgency factor for the whole deal at that point was, you know, at, at 100 miles an hour. And we didn't make that happen. So it got to the point where, you know, we were just kind of hanging on for dear life. Coach, when you start looking at this game and you look back at this game now and look back at the second half and the way we struggled offensively, what do you learn from your football team? Because there's some things I'm sure you want to work on. Well, a good bit of it that we have learned, you know, from going back home and actually sitting down and going through the film uh, and, and knowing exactly what happened in some situations. But we did find out that we had a hard time dealing with a speed rush style kind of defensive end. Our young offensive tackles got, got their hands uh, uh, handed to them a little bit today. And uh, the fact that we couldn't really run the football the way we'd like to, you know, really kind of exasperate the overall situation with the fact that we couldn't actually protect either. So it was a worst case scenario of possibilities. Hopefully we're not as bad as we play it, you know, tonight. But I'm going to tell you, we've got some work to do. We've got lots of work to do. All right, we're going to take another time out here on the Buddy Pew Show. When we come back, we'll tell you what's up next for your South Carolina State Bulldogs. All right, the South Carolina State Bulldogs return to Orangeburg this week when the Bulldogs take on Morgan State. It will be homecoming in Orangeburg. But, Coach, we've kind of turned this into a special weekend for a special person for South Carolina State. Right. It's, it's Donna Shell's uh, coming out party for the uh, uh, NFL Hall of Fame. He was just selected. He was just inducted uh, this past August. And uh, we are having a... Uh, a nice ceremony to uh, allow people to have a chance to congratulate him and to maybe get some autographs and some of that kind of stuff. I think at 10 o'clock in the morning at the student center and then of course the parade and that kind of stuff has been called off because of the because of COVID virus but we are still having most of the other activities and uh, we'll go about to having uh, the homecoming game at 3 30 in the afternoon uh, this coming Saturday afternoon. That's the key thing folks 3 30 this afternoon at the Oliver C. Dawson Bulldog Stadium and of course 
Coach, you got to go back to work, but you know Morgan State up next. They did not play well this past Friday night, but and it's not a matter of them not playing well. We didn't play well, so and this game is when the season now starts. Exactly. We are now going into our conference, and, you know, we've got a chance now to start off from scratch, so it's back to zero now, and, uh, you know, it, it's a good thing that we do get an opportunity at this point to go and have something really big to, you know, to motivate us. So right now we are going to get ready to play Morgan this coming Saturday. It's homecoming and it's conference. Are we looking forward to it? Coach, what do you know quickly about Morgan State? You know you had a chance to see him play Friday night. Uh, not a whole lot defensively, which is what we, you know, really probably ought to pay most attention to because I'm most on the offensive side. You know, they're mostly a, a, a three-down kind of a front, and they've, they've struggled a little bit to stop the run. So, you know, we'll figure out how to get, you know, ourselves in a, in a place where we can be successful against their defense. And then, you know, they've, they've got the traditional style of offense where they've uh, their quarterback is more drop back style kind of guy who wants to throw it down the field. He's got a couple tight ends, a couple big skill guys. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see exactly, you know, how we go about getting after them this coming Saturday. All right, folks, we hope to see you next week in Orangeburg when South Carolina State takes on Morgan State, 3.30 kickoff, and next week right here on Bally Sports on the Buddy Pugh Show. Thank you for watching the Buddy Pugh Show, featuring highlights of the South Carolina State Bulldogs. The show has been brought to you by Prisma Health, the South Carolina Education Lottery, the County of Orangeburg, Farm Bureau Insurance, Founders Federal Credit Union, and by the Department of Health and Environmental Control. Join us next week for highlights of South Carolina State football on the Buddy Pugh Show.